in all of our lives. A chill and darkness that makes us yearn for days that have gone or put our hope in days yet to be. The winter, cold and bare as nature takes stock, rests, unwinds, sleeps until the time is right. An endless cycle and yet a perfect model. We need a winter in our lives, a time of rest, a time to stand still, a time to reacquaint ourselves with the faith in which we live. It is only then that we can draw strength from the one in whom we are rooted, take time to grow and rise through the darkness, into the warm glow of your springtime, to blossom and flourish, bring color and vitality into this world. Thank you, God, for the seasons of our lives. Please join me as we call one another to worship. Our souls wait in silence. Our hope rests in God, our rock, our salvation, our refuge, we will not be shaken. In this time of worship, we pour out our hearts because we trust in God's steadfast love. Our opening hymn is In the Bleak Midwinter, which is 221 in the Red Hymnal.
We look around us and feel so sad, worthless, and discouraged. And you remain with us. We look around and we see unspeakable violence, terrorism, and hatred. And you see who humanity can become. We look around and find ourselves sliding into anger and hatred. And you remind us who we are. We feel sorry for ourselves. We think something is wrong with us and you see the good within. We look around and we see death and destruction, but you see hope. We look around and we see greed, power seeking, and fear having its day. We are ready to give up on our human kindred, but you never give up. You promise that despite these tough times, you never give up on humanity. Let us sing together. have wilderness and dry land here in the U.S. and abroad. We may not venture into it very often, but we know it is there. It has its place on our maps. More familiar to us, however, is the wilderness in our own hearts, the empty spaces in our own lives, the desert of longings that engulf us at Christmas. Wilderness is a hard place. 
but also a place of beauty and grace. Revealed by its sunsets and sunrises, the glow of ancient rocks, the moon shining on the sand. Do not be afraid of the desert places in your life, for it is here that the good news may be heard most profoundly. May it be so. Our hymn of prayer is 3142 in the green, in the green hymnal. through many a long night for your coming. Like those of old, our eyes have been red from weeping, our minds numb from anxiety, our hands held out in longing. And this Advent season sees us waiting again alongside our own struggles, alongside a world torn apart by greed and need, poverty and affluence. When will you come to us? When will we see a star we can trust? When will wise ones rise up in our midst? When will humble workers see angels? How long, O oh God, must we wait for the promises to be fulfilled? How long will you keep us waiting? So as once more we play the waiting game, unable to bring about the changes we seek, unable to put an end to society's pain, unable to appease all the hunger, help us to be tenacious, unyielding in our expectation that Christ has come and Christ will come again. It is solstice night. It is the death of darkness. For an age, light has been slipping away, but now no further. It shall return. And in the hearing of the darkness, the light says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. The promise breeds itself from the frost and long nights. There is an awakening. And in the hearing of the darkness, the light says, the people who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. The day now, shrunken, yet is filled with hope and begins to stretch, pushing at the edges of darkness, scraping it away with hope of new life. And in the hearing of the darkness, the light says, for unto you a child is born. Unto you a son is given. This is a darkness greater than any night, and the light more than the day. Right in the heart of the deeper human darkness, a manger is ready, 
as the age of brightness returns. The Advent promise has found a place to chase the darkness and make room for the light. Our Old Testament reading tonight is Psalm 130. From a sea of troubles I cry out to you, Lord. Won't you please listen as I beg for mercy? If you kept record of our sins, no one could last long. But you forgive us, and so we will worship you with all my heart. I am waiting, Lord, for you. I trust your promises. I wait for you more eagerly than a soldier on guard duty waits for the dawn. Yes, I wait more eagerly than a soldier on guard duty waits for the dawn. Israel, trust the Lord. God is always merciful and has the power to save you. Israel, the Lord, will save you from all your sins. Our New Testament reading is the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, Jesus' first sermon. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the side of a mountain and sat down. Jesus' disciples gathered around him, and he taught them. God blesses those who depend only on God. They belong to the kingdom of heaven. God blesses those who grieve. They will find comfort. God blesses those who are humble. The earth will belong to them. God blesses those people who want to obey God more than to eat or drink. They will be given what they want. God blesses those who are merciful. They will be treated with mercy. God blesses those whose hearts are pure. They will see God. God blesses those people who make peace. They will be called God's children. God blesses people who are treated badly for doing right. They belong to the kingdom of heaven. God will bless you when people insult you, mistreat you, and tell all kinds of evil lies about you because of me. You will have a great reward in heaven. For people did the same thing to the prophets who lived long ago. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, and for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. the king. 
Beloved, I know it is hard this season to find space to let the heavy things that you are holding just breathe for a moment. I know that there are many who want us to always be happy at this time, but we also need a space to remember all the traditions and memories that we love that have been hard to remember the loved ones who aren't with us or all that we have lost in the past year. And so I offer for you tonight this prayer for when holidays are hard. And just give all of those things that you have brought into this holy space tonight a place to breathe, if just for a moment. There are days I am okay, O oh Lord, and other days I wake and I cannot bear to face what awaits. For there are certain days that were once a source of warmth and celebration, of fellowship and life. Birthdays, anniversaries, milestones, and holidays. Those calendar squares once colored by the light of bright expectation, now hold an inverse ache of their former delight. Even as I am learning again to take forward movement of daily life in stride, sometimes these special days arrive and jar me from my newfound rhythm. The past and the present overlap the heart and memory feel displaced. As a shipwrecked sailor nearing land, swept again to sea by receding tides, I'm suddenly pulled back to the first sadness. Sometimes I feel too weary, weighed down, and weak to navigate another day so marked by loss, O oh God so inside out, so incomplete, so filled with the inescapable presence of an inescapable absence. Oh Christ, save me from the pain of holidays and special days. Save me from this pain, or meet me in it and save me through it. Either spare me this harsh echo of heartache, O Lord, or shepherd me now through the very living of it, through the resurgent tears, the returning memories, the reawakening weight of a day that once dawned so pregnant with joy. Hold me close, O Christ, and show me your face even in this place of lingering loss, even in this season that has become a receptacle of past sorrows. Amidst my weeping, let sweeter memories resurface, buoyed by a deeper joy that no sorrow can suppress. Let me draw upon this day's former delights so that old happiness and heartbreak are laced and intertwined with new hope and fellowship and beauty. Lead me, O Lord, through this layered confusion of celebration and lament, of things present and things past. Let me make of this day a new thing. Though holidays might be hard days, O God, by the movement of your mercies, may they also become holy days, teaching me again and again to entrust to you my many griefs as often as these unavoidable days uncover and reveal them. For if I must endure their repetition, and I know that I must, then let the hurts tendered by this day's arrival become as the annual planting of seeds of sorrow 
that tended by your spirit and watered with my tears will bloom into harvests of eternal hope. Indeed, let me learn year by year, O Lord, how this long pain might be transformed into the groanings of a faith actively yearning towards a glorious and certain resurrection. Today, let me learn again how your grace will, will be always sufficient to my need, your comfort sufficient to my sorrow, your presence sufficient to my lost. Now lead me, carry me, and walk beside me through this day, O Christ. Shepherd all of my sorrows. In unexpected places, let me find joy as we come to you in silence in this moment. For you, O Lord, my soul in stillness waits, but truly my hope is in you. Amen. As you're ready to return back to us, I invite you to join in our closing hymn, number 218. It came upon a midnight clear.
Beloved, if this night has brought up for you some painful memories or a need to perhaps decompress or be in prayer, Pastor Perrin, after this, is going to go into the chapel, which is right out this door, if you want someone to talk with or to pray with you. After the benediction, Dr. Sarah is going to be playing some music. You are welcome to stay in this place as long as your spirit needs it to just be however you need to be at this time. Receive this benediction for the longest night. All throughout these months, as the shadows have lengthened, this blessing has been gathering itself, making ready, preparing for this night. It has practiced walking in the dark, traveling with its eyes closed, feeling its way by memory, by touch, by the pull of the moon, even as it wanes. So believe me when I tell you, this blessing will reach you, even if you have not light enough to read it. It will find you, even though you cannot see it coming. You will know the moment of its arriving by your release of the breath you have held so long, a loosening of the clenching in your hands, of the clutch around your heart, a thinning of the darkness that had drawn itself around you. This blessing does not mean to take the night away, but it knows the hidden roads. It knows the resting spots along the path. It knows what it means to travel in the company of a friend. So when the blessing comes, take its hand, get up, and set out on a road you cannot see. This is the night when you can trust that any direction you go, you will be walking toward the dawn. Amen.